come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and germs, foolish mortals, and the rest of you. You've stumbled upon the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast where every week a new movie is chosen round robin by one of the Saturday Night Freak Show members, and then we gather at the bar and talk about it for your entertainment and listening pleasure. Who are the Saturday Night Freak Show regulars, you ask? Holly. Travis. And I'm Colin. And tonight we listened, or we listened to a movie. I, well, I did listen to it. Yeah. I watched That's fair it. to say. <laughs> we gathered I did both. to watch a movie. Oh, and by the way, I should also point out before we get going here that uh, please subscribe, if you haven't already, to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio. YouTube and more, or give us a star rating or a thumbs up or a like because that helps us find other a funny emoji, just something. Yeah, just something. <laughs> it helps us find other like minded folks like yourself. What do we watch tonight, Holly? Tonight we watched 1985 Legend by Ridley Scott 31 years ago. Good. Love Holy of God. the Sun. Yeah, love <laughs> of the Sun. You have a thing for that guy from Yes, right? No, you know well, Tangerine Dream. Yeah, yeah, I but mean, they didn't have a vocalist. We looked it up. It's the guy is from the Yes, lead singer from Yes. It is. Holy yeah. shit! I did not know that. I yeah. didn't so yes, I do. Know, I, I absolutely do have a thing for uh, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and uh, the soundtrack of this movie. Very fond of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so Legend comes at us from uh, Ridley Scott, who yes. continually tinkers with his movies years after they've been created. He's and just going to, like, perfect everything, though, right? He's, he's an just artist. like it's never quite good I want enough. to make the, mo- the perfect, like, space horror movie. Boom. I want to make the perfect, like, cybernetic punk, like, boom. I want to make the perfect fairy tale, like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be awesome at that. Yeah, well, this was what his. So, I mean, at the time in 1985, then he would have been was it 85 or 86? It was 85. The reason I was thinking it was a 30 year. Um, but he had scored big with Alien in 79 and Blade Runner mm-hmm. in 82, and I th- can't remember what he did in between, if anything. Uh, there was one more. So I can't remember. It's not what. someone to watch over me because that came later, and Black Rain was later after he got out of the fantasy sci-fi genre until Prometheus went back to it, and his big historical epics and military films that he's known sort for sort of now. sandal movies. Yeah, that he's been doing for so long now. But he had, uh, I think, at the time he was known as a very visual filmmaker. Like he was renowned for his artistic stamp that he put on mm-hmm. on films, and so that was. Uh, Kind of why you went to see a Ridley Scott movie when it came out. Yeah. Everything is pretty photo perfect. And I can't remember, like, so the resurgence in fantasy films was because of, I mean, Star Wars Conan and then Conan or... the Barbarian, right? Right. Yeah, maybe maybe Clash of the Titans. I don't know. Because we had that like <laughs> with the special effects of the 80s, then we could do these things and sculpt these That's amazing That's what I liked makeups. about the, eight, the 80s was just doing the, like, the perfect rendition of every sort of like fan i mean just Mm -hmm. because special uh, special effects have gotten so far they're just like Mm -hmm. oh we need to do a a a monster movie we need to do a uh uh this type of movie like anything fairy tale movie uh sword and sorcery movie uh, yeah Oh, Sword and the Sorcerer. Right. Can you, know. you say that already? <laughs> <laughs> Excalibur. Right? Yeah, Excalibur. Yeah. <laughs> and and that was the that was the funny thing about Ridley Scott was that, you know, he'd he'd done his his space sci fi with Alien and he'd he'd done these these fantastical movies and he knew he's like, I gotta get this I gotta get this fairy tale out of my system before I can do a more modern movie. He's like, I've got these epic movies that are all of other worlds or futuristic or Did he whatever. write this? No, he didn't. He went to um, William Hortzberg, yeah. who had written... William. He was mainly doing screenplays, but he had done some books and... Um, William Hortzberg had written uh, a novel called Falling Angel. Now, yes. I, never, I never read the novel, but yeah. it formed the basis of one of my favorite movies, Angel Heart. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, that's his. So but that's why I recognize yeah. his name. So who he, came up with the concept then? Is this- he went to he went to William Hortzberg, Ridley Scott did, and he said, "Look, I want to make a fairy tale movie. I want to make a fan a, a fantastic uh, fairy tale movie. Here's what I want. I want it to have unicorns, and I want it to have a villain named Darkness. Go." And that's all he told him, and he just ran with it, and he came up with this 
amazing script that was legend and everyone that read it like the first draft was just completely hooked by it everyone was sucked in even like executives every no one was like no this needs work no everyone wanted to be behind this well now i'm guessing i'm not guessing maybe maybe i heard this (laughs) on a commentary track or something but was it true that like Hortzberg's original draft was like, you know, basically a novel. It had yeah. like all sorts of crazy detail packed into it. It was yes. like, okay, we have to pare this down to make it like filmable at a budget. Yeah. Um, right? Rob, was it Rob Botin? Bob? Rob Botin. Botin, thank you. I can never remember how to say his name. He looked at it and he read it and he read this it is through. The makeup effects Makeup guy. effects artist, thank you. He went through it and he was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. It sucked me in. It's He read it like a novel. And then he reread it making his notes of what he would have to do. And he realized that it's like millions of characters. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm, I'm going to have to show this to Ridley because I don't know if this is going to work. And similar things happen with executives and they're just like, yeah, this is a lot. This is, yeah. this well, is too much. Actually <laughs> kind of an interesting th- approach to doing a fantasy movie then at this point in time, because you had like, okay, I mean, the biggest uh, thing in the fantasy genre it had to be mm-hmm. the Lord of the Rings, the written Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. So fantasy then beces orcs and uh, Urukai the and yeah. version, right? right. Dragons yeah. and and yeah. this like chose to go fairy tale, mm-hmm. right? They yeah. chose to go, which I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just because there was so much of the D and D orc, like you know. I mean, this at least stood out. Because, I mean, when I think of, like, 80s fairy tale movie, like, I could think of The Last Unicorn and this are, like, the only movies I like with unicorns. <laughs> I, I think those are the two that everyone thinks of. You yeah. know? Because, like, I mean, they just didn't do the unicorn fairy land, you know? They just, they you know, they wanted to do the hardcore mm-hmm. battle shit, you know? This is really mm-hmm. an amalgamation of, like, every single little, like, fairy tale thing you've heard of, right? Yeah. That's what I yeah. think, though, we're... I don't know if, I mean... It's what's interesting about this movie, but also I think holds it back a little bit, is that it tries to be the super amalgamation of every single fucking thing you've ever heard. That's why it's yeah. called Legend, right? Right. Because yeah. it's, it's not just fairy tales. This is this is everything yeah. from from King Arthur and freaking you know blah 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 whatever. Yeah, and that honestly it was it, it was a culmination because it was both Ridley Scott and um and William Hortzberg. This was like their opportunity. They had to get it out of their system. So every like fantasy fairy tale that was inside of them, this was their shot to get it out. So this so is they I mean, kind of threw it all in there. I guess when I think fairy tales, I think like you know Grimm, you know, oh, yeah. or, you know those yeah. kind of things where you have. Okay, so here's I guess my my question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fairy tales are usually like a story with some type of a moral, right? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. illustrated. Like, so do you get that from legend or is legend trying to be more of an adventure story? I mean, yeah, it's kind of an adventure story. They're kind of having their cake and eating it too. Yeah. I think, I think it's both. I think it's the lesson of light over darkness. But, yeah, but that's but, really, well, yeah, the lesson no, is like, I think the lesson is either, trust or i don't even fucking yeah it's so meddled <laughs> or muddled yeah, right that's the problem with this movie in a weird yeah. way because like like okay to die i guess to dive quickly into the story i suppose uh if we want to start talking directly about it um now i'm gonna mention some additional scene these guys watched the theatrical cut and i had to watch the the director's cut just because i wanted to make sure when i say i don't like the director's cut i want to i was like it's been like <laughs> 15, 20 years since I saw the director's cut. I was like, bah, but then I saw it. I'm like, nah, yeah, I was right. Okay, uh, like listeners, just so you know, I'm the guy who's in your corner. If you like the director's cut, yeah, he's I, I like the, yeah. I, <laughs> but so, okay, so the princess, Princess Lily. Lily, played by uh, Mia Sarah. Mia Sarah. Who you know from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yes, we know her from that. <laughs> God. And uh, so... I mean, right from the get, it's like this movie, like even in the two hour version I watch, man, they, I mean, they try to jam pack so much shit yeah. that it's like, so right in the first five minutes, you're supposed to understand like, like darkness is in his tower and he's just like, I must hide from the light. Oh, it hurts. And like, you know, we need to get the unicorn and, and you see the awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I love the, uh, the way the licks. Little- yeah, Blix, 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 Blix. Blix. yeah, the, the head goblin. goblin. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Because I mean, again, we have to mention Rob Bottin's work here because, like, he is this. I mean, I don't know who if Tom Cruise or Ridley Scott are the stars. Like Rob Bottin's work is just amazing yeah. in this movie. His sculpt work, 
Uh, and especially the Tim Curry character. He plays oh Lord of Darkness, but it's the devil. It's like it's one of the like, best realized yeah, devils the I've devil. ever seen. I, I think it it's is. the best, yeah. yeah. It's absolutely the best, like when you got to think of it. And like the way Tim Curry plays it, mm-hmm. just the way Tim Curry has like, I don't know, a seductive kind of like seductive mouth movement. So I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's um the only honestly the only way the movie was recognized was that it was nominated for an Oscar for best makeup. Rob Bottin was. Mm. Mm. That's the only acknowledgement it got basically. And Bottin for yeah. those of you who don't know is the guy who did the, the Werewolves and the Howling. He did yeah. uh, the thing. I mean like well, he's he got better. Uh, yeah, I mean he's, he's done like yeah. tons I mean, and tons he's, of Yeah, of he's stuff. he's worked on Star Wars. He's still working. He worked on Game of Thrones. Like he's yeah. he's yeah. Fight Club he does like all the David oh, yeah. Fincher stuff. So right away, they tell you that the only way, like, we have to kill the unicorn so the sun will set forever, right? And, and darkness will rule the land. The only way to uh, to track it is in no sense. In no sense. Tim Curry just showed up with the... What? That was pretty good. Darkness will, like, that appear every once in a while. <laughs> I'm hoping, dude. This uh, is I'm... one of my. This is one of those movies that, like, the little acting I've tried to do or whatever. This is one of those movies I'm like, oh shit, that performance is amazing. Yeah, because he's just going for broke. It's evil. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it is evil. It's yeah, and he you know? doesn't. It's one of those things where, like, he, the, he plays underneath all that oh, fucking yeah. make. I mean, like, you got to imagine, like, this guy with this gigantic right, it's fucking all his, rack of it's words. All his mouth. His head, yeah. yeah. He's he like, playing. Oh, he snarls yeah. and like there's a slight <laughs> smile and shit. Ridley Scott knew right on. He's like, I need someone who can play big. And he kept thinking of Tim Curry and Rocky Horror Picture Show. And he's like, that is yeah. the bravest performance. <laughs> he's like, this guy's the only one that can do it as big as I want it. Yeah. So and like, he scored again with the Pennywise and the yeah. Stephen oh, King's yeah. Yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, he's got like three. Uh, you know, memorable, super memorable oh, yeah. characters. So only. automatically, they show you a princess who. Like, she may be innocent, but they're already showing a mischievous side to her, right? Okay, they're, now that may be... Now, see, this no, is... No, because she pulls the... She still pulls the, the laundry line on her, like, fucking peasant she's, friend. Yeah, she's a princess, like, but she, she's got fairies. Blade and fairies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But didn't you get... I guess that's one so of the So they're trying to show you already that, like, an innocent person has a duality. An, in, an, an innocent human has already has a duality in them. I mean, you could be innocent... But you're also always playing with it. It's like, and like, maybe this is why, in a weird way, this movie never necessarily sat with me because I'm like, this chick's kind of. But like, she's, she's, kind of a she's more that way in the director's cut, I think, than she is in. But the, I have, in, I've because they cut out like that. all mm-hmm. the scenes between uh, her and Tom Cruise when they first meet up in the forest. Because Tom Cruise plays a uh, what is he he's like? Just Jack. A, he's Jack of Fables. He's Jack of all fables. He's Jack yeah, and the Beanstalk. He's, he's Jack and the, I don't know how many Jacks. There's he's a lot like of Jacks. He is some he's type of woodland child. creature. Yeah, he's the yeah. forest child. Okay. Which so. actually, Ridley Scott originally wanted him to be, be like green and like a mm-hmm. lizard type. Weird. And yeah, and um, William Hortzberg was like, so you want you want him to be a lizard boy? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And he goes, and he's going to woo a princess. Huh. He's like, right. Okay, fuck it. No, you're right. <laughs> I hear that story about Ridley Scott like all the goddamn time. He goes like, you yeah. know, when they're giving him ideas, Dan O'Bannon had a similar story about Alien, where it was like, we're going to do this and they should be green. And I'm like, but Ridley, what? you're right. Fuck it. No, we're not doing yeah. that. Gonna, but he was just like, I was amazed that he was willing to go that far yes. with yeah. ideas. I'll just take it as far yeah. as it'll go. Lily is supposed to turn into a cat at the end when she's, what? Well, we're going to get there later. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. That's too much information. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so Jack is a woodland nymph. No, that's not true. He's just a, a, he's just a dude. He yeah. just lives in the woods and he can like hear he's the a, wind. He's, and a chi- and, yeah. he's a child of the forest. Yeah, and the but, birds flock to yeah. him. And that so he's one with nature. He's a nature yeah. boy. Okay. Yeah. I get yeah, and like Lily. So Lily constantly Isn't I hate that, that Rick we Flair's nickname. <laughs> Nature boy, Rick Nature boy, Rick Sorry. I hate that we never see her village though, or her kingdom, or something her, like. Yeah. I think that's what's really missing from this fucking movie. Is like all this shit happens, and it's like. What is everybody thinking about this? We only see yeah. a few frozen fucking peasants, and like we don't know what's going on with yeah. anything. And we don't see the kingdom. She does mention that her father's house or something like that. In the director's cut, I think she's a princess. In the American cut, she's a lady. But they still, she still oh. refers to like her. Yeah. In my, you know, something she says something some, to Nell. Like you're as wealthy of, as I am. And she's some sort of aristocrat. That's that's yeah, all we know. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. You're as wealthy as I am in knowledge or something. I can't remember. You live a very rich life. Yeah. That's what she says. Yeah. Yeah. Which she's not that nice in the director's cut. In the director's cut, she just like. She's a brat. She just gets there. She's just like, I'm going to go see Jack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she just. But I, I think that is like where her character eventually goes. It's like that's what they're setting that up. Mm-hmm. Like but exactly like as you quick, said, but that they're duality. quickly trying to like get there in this movie. It's yeah. like in a weird way because it's a fairy tale. It's almost like they don't want to build character, so they're quickly trying to get these archetypes out there, right? Mm-hmm. Woodland boy, you know, princess yeah. is a little like mischievous. Uh, and then like they, mm-hmm. you know, they go to the woods and and and, and, and uh, you know they're gonna. Meet with a unicorn. And, oh, yeah. and, and, uh, it's all like, it's, so we would say it's plot-based, right? It's all events yeah. strung together more than it is characters leading you there. I mean, like, even watching it this time, and I'm not dogging on the movie because I do like this movie. I'm sure, saying it right now sure. to cover what I'm about to say. But <laughs> I uh, was watching it going, like, Tom Cruise is just kind of like, he doesn't, like, lead the action. I mean, oh. I suppose that's what his character's his arc is, right? Like, by the end, I'm yeah. actually going to pick up the sword and go yeah, do he'll something. He'll do anything for this princess girl. He's kind of right. pathetic. <laughs> right. He's she, like, she throws a ring this... off a thing, and he's just like, <gasps> Yeah, but it's because Jack! he's Jack! innocent. Sorry. I think that's maybe the no, thing. Yeah, he's, he's the innocent. He's the innocent, yeah. not her. Oh, yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That's what, that's what lures I picked the up, unicorn. too. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's what, he's one with nature. He doesn't understand like material things, but she does. She likes material things. She comes from this wealthy world. He's the innocence. He's mm-hmm. the purity. Now, let me ask if this happened in the theatrical cut. So the goblins, well, because the well, the goblins are following her, right? The goblins are following the princess Lily. As far as we can tell, they show up where the unicorns but then, like, are somehow. And this so. is why I think they had to cut a little bit of this movie back a little bit because, like, in that scene. They try to build like a something, you know. The the goblins are hunting Lily, and she can't, you know. She's just calling for Jack, right? Like, please answer me. And it's just like I, I the where the emotion comes from in this movie, right. really, like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. And then sometimes she'll get scared, and then the the atmosphere is affected. It's like, what the fuck is going on? This movie's a little insane, and I know it's because. It's because it's after, after the they poison. Uni- yeah, they poison the unicorn it's, with a dart. Yeah, and then yeah. the the thunder rolls in and all that. But it's right with going. the it's with her heightening of uh, tension because Jack jumps in after the ring and mm. you know. But then all of a sudden, when it's just like this is a little like a little too. And another thing for this movie, I don't care which version you're watching, the fucking shit is busy. The screen is so busy oh, yeah. with just like. Put everything in the screen. We'll have like pollen and yeah. fucking like just just pollen and and, and rose petals and shit just flying everywhere, bubbles, dude. Glitter, dude. Yeah. Glitter, all glitter. Over everyone's face. <laughs> There's a little too much in this movie. We're like, holy there fuck! Is. They needed to pull back a little yeah. bit because it's so. Well, maybe busy. it was a new thing in the maybe. There's maybe glitter the, rock and glitter I'm sure movies. It was so expensive. That, I love it. <laughs> Well, let I don't me like ask glitter you on her this. face, but like the scene where I'll get to that, but the scene where he like picks up the sword, his whole hand, yeah. his whole hand is glittery. Yeah, his whole like, face why? is all glittery well, in that scene. Is he fairy? No, fairy it's, magic? It's because it's everywhere. He's gonna get it on it. But see, I wonder <laughs> if that is actually what Ridley Scott was thinking. Glitter is magic, magic glitter yeah. is in magic. this movie. Yeah, they they would take these ordinary things, and Ridley Scott would look at it, and he'd be like, "Add some glitter." Like that was his whole <laughs> Add thing. Glitter. Yeah. He was like a yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, Holly, before we go any further, I have to ask this question because I've asked this question of myself many, many a year, never have come up with a good answer. Mm -hmm. What is it with women and unicorns? The appeal. You know. They want to think they're pure. Every girl (laughs) loves Girls want to think that they're pure. I love them. (laughs) Well, I'm a dude. I like unicorns, but that's because I saw the last unicorn. And unicorns can fight with their horns. (laughs) <laughs> so it's a warrior thing they've got a horn they can gore you with it maybe what's the female appeal to, i'm sure yeah. that's not the same thing. i don't know I, maybe it's the whole like what you can't have kind of thing i don't know hmm. i honestly like i like well, this movie come it's, just a, cool, it it's need... just a cool it's just a cool creature <laughs> I, just, I like this movie and there was unicorns and like lisa frank shit that i had when i was a kid but other than that i've never been like unicorns like hmm. i need them have you seen my unicorn phone <laughs> or something you know my unicorn lamp my unicorn yeah. i'm sure there's people out there I've, like that i yeah. might have had like a unicorn folder in like second grade but it's never been like a thing for me i don't know hmm. 
Well, I guess also, uh, before we go Although on. I we did should... like My Little Ponies. See, there's something. Well, everybody, every girl wants a, a, a pony, I guess. Yeah. So this is a special pony. Um, but the reason that there are two versions of this movie that we're kind of jumping back. We're talking about legend, the whole experience. I yeah. guess. The, but experience, the legend experience. It's the way experience. that we, uh, or the way that I understand it, you'll correct me where I'm wrong. Ridley Scott shot. You know, this movie, a two and it, hour was, movie. it was <laughs> released internationally as two hours. Mm -hmm. And when they screened it for an American audience, there were Ridley Scott became very insecure because there was some. There was a couple hooligans in the audience that were a little stoned. And they were snickering and at they the were movie, making comments and snickering during the movie. And he got really insecure. But everybody does that, dude. My ex wife, <laughs> I showed this to her, and she's like, it's a fairy movie. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. So there's lots of people. Some people just can't jive with the fairy tale shit. Some people are just like, nope, if it's not orcs and dragons mm -hmm. and like fucking wood elves and bow and arrows. But they I don't wonder want nothing to do with it. If maybe that's part of the thing. Like, I mean, the. I mean, that's why I like it, is because it's fairies. But the the whole fairy tale thing. We'll I mean, you've got an English director. I don't know what nationality yeah, Horsberg is, but like that's is. exactly that's, that's, what that's part is. of their mythology. That is their so shit. It would play there, but I can yeah. see why because I do fucking think the theatrical vert. It just scenes are longer. They repeat a lot of shit in the director's cut. Like like dude, I know they repeat. Darkness, darkness is speech. always telling you like yeah. dark. It's like we know darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I actually think the theatrical cut allows the viewer to be a little smarter. It does. It allows you to look at, watch the movie, and take in what it means. Where the theatrical cut, everybody's just constantly telling you, telling you, like, mm. this is what this is in a fairy tale. You know? Yeah. It's like, eh, fuck. I, I guess of... we were on the other side. Yeah. Well, at least I was. When we were sitting here, and, like, the, at the beginning of the theatrical <laughs> cut, there's a crawl. There's like a crawl. The, that yeah. explains the movie that to was you, explained you dumb in, Americans. But in the director's cut, it was explained <laughs> that way, but with a voice over of yeah. darkness and that was so that was just, his voiceover from later in the movie that's what he says no well yeah it was like verbatim the same lines but, I'm like, but i'm no but i'm saying but i'm saying in the director in the director's cut he explained not just that part later he also explained it in the beginning that like dark i must wait in the dark so it's like yeah, fuck it do it with a crawl or, yeah because i that's what i like about this version i don't like that you have to wait to see darkness because why if he's fucking oh. talking and he's doing the power ranger thing where he's in the back of the chair and you see his arm it's yeah. like fuck it just show the motherfucker why do i got to like see well, his arm okay so and i guess it's an hour later till you see the yeah. motherfucker but oh, it doesn't build any suspense i'm telling you really Scott misses the mark on every like emotional beat. I think he's trying to make in this movie, and that's why this movie needed to be like we got to cut a fucking half an hour out of this. Rid. Well, see, I guess I was on the other. Here's the other side of this, like because I saw a legend, you know, on whatever VHS or something, the theatrical cut, and didn't really like it. This is back in like eighty six, eighty seven, whatever. And so it comes out on dvd and this like director's cut and like everybody's talking about how this movie's awesome and i'm like maybe i should give this a second shot so it's back in the day when you had to buy shit to actually see it yeah and i watched the director's cut and i mean obviously they've given away the design of darkness in the advertising materials you've mm -hmm. seen what he's going to look like but yeah. watching the movie i mean basically it was almost like a first time go through it again that they don't show him up front leads this to like well, what the fuck does he look like? What's he like? And then he shows up uh, as like a a phantom or something. A at weird one point. A, a hooded figure, yeah. In Which the I woods mean, to talk to his minions. It. You can't make yeah. out what it is. You can yeah. see it better in the Blu-ray, but you still, I don't know what, what it is. It's, it's got just, like I don't even know what it's supposed lumps to be. all over its face. It doesn't, it's not articulated. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's like, and so it's then you're like, like a race, a dark race. Or you're like, is that darkness? It's this big, dark shape. And so when he comes out of the fucking mirror later on, it was like, oh, shit. It just it to me that time. I think it worked the way that it was, you know, the yeah. original intention. It was like, oh, fuck, because yeah. the music by Jerry Goldsmith was like on point. And that's why I missed that when I watched the theatrical <laughs> cut where they replaced the music with the tangerine. That's dream, awesome. I love that. Uh, music. Woo! Boop, 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 boop. It plays the same theme over and over and over. It's again. awesome. It's just awesome. It, it works. Tangerine <laughs> Dream was a German, uh, like what, a pop synth group. Dude, they're still that doing did, shit. Uh, to, I think they just did a song for Grand Theft Auto Five. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, in the they're 80s, awesome. I in do this like era, them. They're one of my favorite like synth bands. Especially, I guess you it seemed it. like they got like popular doing a lot of soundtracks. They did. Like I never heard an album by them. I know they have them, but yeah, it they was were all, mainly uh, soundtracks. Sorcerer was a big one for them. Uh, Firestarter. Uh, 
near dark. There's a big one that I'm missing. Oh. It'll come to me. Tangerine Dream. Anyway. But so yeah, the theatrical, the director's cut was scored by Jerry Goldsmith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And full orchestra. Full orchestra. But it was so angelic. It was score. ridiculous. It didn't fit the movie. But it was In a weird big, way, it doesn't fit the movie. It was big kind of like saying. classical, I guess. But I think, I don't know, just being in the 80s, I think the Tangerine Dream, it fits the fantasy. I don't know why. I don't know why, because fan- I think fantasy music did get entwined somehow. You know, like, I don't know. Fantasy music got entwined. If you're talking about, I mean, yeah, uh, this isn't the, mu- the music I'm obviously talking about, but just to give you a, a frame of reference. You know, shit like the Iron Maidens and the, the, the Rainbows and the Rushes. It's like music about a lot of the progressive rock, a lot of the, you know, they, they had a lot of fantasy-based music. So I just think our image of fantasy with music just really had a, I don't know. Um, I just had a, you know, yeah. like, I mean, that's why I love it. I just love legend. Like I said, just that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You, you love that pan flute. It's great. It is fucking great. It's probably even a keyboard. It's, it's just a keyboard. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's, a it's like two guys with a keyboard, <laughs> right? A or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's one of my favorite synthesizer scores, yeah. which you can listen to the whole hour, 33 minutes of it on YouTube. Mm. Great. It's fantastic. <laughs> so so okay so the goblins steal the the I, alicorn I love, what do they call it the unicorn's horn yeah they just call it alicorn i can't recall. something like that something we have to like get that, the alicorn yeah. back yeah but you know so what the goblin where are we i mean lily well, sees her everything turns to ice right everything's frozen yeah and, yeah, and so time. it becomes yeah. Jack's and for mission some reason, to retrieve Lily the just runs away. Like, Jack's stuck under the pond, and she's like, fuck this, it's cold! <laughs> like, I'm going inside. She's selfish. She that is, is selfish. Yeah, that's yeah. Thing. I hate this girl. Yeah. I do. This, this, watching it this time, I'm like, fuck, I can't get behind her. I hate her. Well, uh, she's okay, what but, I fear. This but is why to I, be fair, that, I think that it comes across stronger in came, the version you watch. It still came across. That, that does, I'm, just saying, no, I'm just saying it still came across in this. Because there's still things that, because I, once again, I think this is kind of bad Ridley filmmaking in a weird way. Like, he just doesn't explain some of his character's motivations. They're so worried about getting to the next part, getting to mm-hmm. the next part, that motivations are kind of thrown out the window yeah, a little it's bit. It's very light on, on characterization, I think. Yeah. But that's a review for later. Okay, so <laughs> Jack has to get the unicorn horn back and to do it or help him in his quest. He's Gump. teamed up with Gump, Gump, which is like a little pan. He's like a pan fairy guy. Yeah. He was like a little kid or something with a weird voice. I've never liked that. The he's, voice. The, guy, the real him. guy is a German actor. Yeah, so he's he touched know. her. Oh, yeah. no, I hate his voice. Yeah, he's, he's 19. and uh, He was 19? He's 19, Holy and he shit. was German. Um, but the entire movie is dubbed. The entire yeah. movie. Oh, yeah, so for sure. they had someone else doing the voice. It's mm-hmm. very yeah. weird. It's very weird. Well, they said it was because um, when they're and when they're filming on the... Because most of it is filmed in the, the forest, which, by the way, we even talked about. The forest in this movie is fake. It's all set. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. all on a soundstage. The 007 soundstage in England. 007, it's, the largest soundstage where Superman huge. was filmed and yep. James Bond. This forest is amazing because they, is they awesome. built these huge fake trees and then put actual vegetation and actual animals in the state. Oh, yeah, it, 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 looks, it looks It looks amazing. fucking crazy. Yeah, they said with, uh, what was it, with the water, they'd missed it down, but the, the heat from the lights would actually make, like, this kind of fog. Yeah. You know, mist. That's and, what I do like about this yeah. movie. I like how everything, I don't know, this movie's so weird. There's some images in this movie that are fucking phenomenal looking, dude. Like, when, it's mm, beautiful. when Jack yeah. first, when Jack is apologizing to the, uh, the unicorn and there's oh, that yeah. white light that's yeah, shining yeah, yeah. from a, it's like yeah. oh my god yeah, with it's those angelic. red petals and it's all angelic. that stuff yeah. oh on the unicorn so, yeah, 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 yeah 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 there's <laughs> the just the a weird softness there's like a weird softness to the this, the yeah this movie's it's, beautiful it's beautiful yeah. yeah but um so when uh, Gump meets um well there's Gump there's What's too many that? bubbles in this scene there's the there's, yeah they got a bubble I don't know why there's a bubble that's why I'm like you guys have lost your fucking my bubbles what does that signify. Again, is that magic. the fairy? It is fairy. <laughs> Again, that's Ridley Scott. That means there's a fairy there. <laughs> he looked at this scene and he was like, what will make this more magical? Bubbles. He's like, bubbles. I really yeah. think, that, but it was so yeah. fucking like, what the fuck? It's like man? the Lawrence Welk bubble machine you guys are And I do that, actually, but... like, I used to. <laughs> I <know who> Lawrence <laughs> Welk is. <laughs> I used to hate uh, Gump's, the, the Gump riddle scene that was in the director's cut. Mm-hmm. I used to not like it, but now I like it because mm-hmm. it's so reminiscent of old fairy tales. Because yeah. they're basically going to, like, basically 
kind of kill Jack, yeah. right? Because they're like, hey, didn't you do something? Did you see anything <laughs> yeah. in the woods today? I mean, it's all snow now. What happened? Yeah. But they're going to kind of like fucking punish him. But then he's like, you know, ah, ch- I challenge yeah, you to that's a how riddle. You do it, right? You challenge yeah. him to a riddle. And, and immortal and so people. these questions three. Like, it's very. Yeah. 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 And everything rhymes. And Everybody even, like, speaks in rhyme. He and fucking like flips cool. out when uh, Jack guesses it. Just because yeah. I guess if you're an immortal or something, you just take that really personally. Like, <laughs> you can like, you just gotta, no, no, no. Yeah. But then they just skip to the whole like drink. But I, I do like that uh, scene a little bit more in the director's cut. Just that yeah. scene. Because it, it adds a sense of consequences, I guess. And the other one, in the theatrical cut, it's like, well, I did it out of love. Oh, well, love then is a whole different let's thing. Let's drink You can ruin drink. the whole fucking world. <laughs> well, let's drink to love. Let's like, what? Yeah. love. Yeah. Love, what? <laughs> but I love that one of uh, Brown Tom is played by Billy Bar- Billy Barty. Who was... Yeah. Gwildor, Gwildor from, from Masters, Masters of the Universe, dude. And he's awesome. I love like, Billy Barney. He's like one of the funniest guys in the movie. Like, yeah. all these little people yeah. are really yeah. funny. Screwball? Is that Screwball. the other one? Screwball and Brown Town, right? Yeah. Was Screwball the guy with the jug of, yeah. Uh, yeah. oh my yeah. God, under like, his, under his hat? Lily, you saw Lily? She was alive when they killed me. <laughs> <laughs> just, that, just that nod. He's like, dude, that is comedic genius right there. That's yeah. great. Dude. So... For, like this is why I'm like, what will Lily the for some dumb reason, unexplained reason, once again, just to drive the plot forward, the goblins show up to the peasant like Lily's hiding in the peasant's house that she visited, and the goblins go there for yeah, I don't know. Well, because that represents just, the human world, I think. They like, were just kind of ransacking the place. Yeah. yeah. But I, to they them. Were, but they, they didn't were, really take any. That's just they, how well, you were showing yeah. the power of the unicorn horn yeah. to have, making the you fire. You saw them bigger. like they were kind of like messing with stuff on the table, like trying to take the food, and they were just kind of ransacking the place. She is so sweet. I could eat her brains like jam. <laughs> I love that line, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she's just like. Well, this is my fault. I have to go follow them. <laughs> I'll make this right. Yeah, yeah I'll but make she this does right. end up being. Yeah, that's right. Because she goes back and with Brown Tom, she ends up getting abducted, I guess, and taken to Darkness's mm-hmm. tree of whatever the fuck. Yeah, it was like the evil, the world tree or the evil tree or something. Yeah, because like she they, follows they left, them to the other unicorn where the yeah, unicorn they left, is um, there with the dying one. Jack and Gump decided that he needed to to be the You'll champion be the to, fix, to fix it. So they're. They're gone getting him some armor. They leave Brown Tom to to watch the unicorn, and that's when Lily shows up. Yeah. Yeah. So the point of that being that uh, Jack will... Uh, He'll just become a hero? Yeah, and he's going to go on the quest, right? The yeah. hero's quest. We need a quest. guy to go on a quest, so we just have to do this. <laughs> and Lily's going to end up, you know, in somehow of her own volition, becomes like the prisoner of uh Well, no, the goblins dark. go the there goblins to like... Yeah, because like, they're like, you can't just kill... There's like, there's another dumb unicorn out yeah, there. Yeah, as you long as there's the one... Other, you, the sun will set. Yeah. Yeah. Or sun will rise again and... So they show up daylight to the is my destroyer. <laughs> well, That's he makes my that best. Very, <laughs> Tim Curry is not as good as you should do it. There's just a. Yeah. There's only a few ones I have. <laughs> I'm sure they're coming up. Yeah, they'll come. Once I get to the scene, I'll be like, Ugh. all right. So, I mean, like, it follows the. I, I guess that's the thing. We rush through, it feels like, a lot of uh, really fantasy not. set pieces, which is my problem, even with like the Hobbit movies now. It's like you have these scenes that are pretty much self contained. You can cut any one of them almost. And you wouldn't miss it in the movie. Uh-huh. In the th- in the director's cut, is there the scene where, um, where was it? They got attacked by like all those the tree people, or what are they uh-huh. zombies? Or the oh, that's when they get to the they get to the giant tree, and they're um, Jack and Gump are going through the the palace, Darkness's palace. Yeah, right? yeah, there was like a brief scene where these guys jumped out at him. Yeah. I'm like, I don't remember this scene at all. It is either like one of those things I just where watched this. Yeah, yeah. Jack and Gump are looking for Lily in the palace, and they go through this corridor, and there's all these, like, weird, like, they sound like cats, like, animalistic, zombie-looking things. People with, like, long, straggly hair, and they jump out at them, and they end up oh, boarding hey. up a door yeah. or something, running this down the hallway. This is crazy, yeah. yeah. I just it's watched like, this. And it's, it's, well, that's what I'm like, saying. It's 25 seconds. Inconsequential. Yeah. You can just cut well, because it Because even, like, okay, because they even want you to feel things that you shouldn't feel, like, just because they want you to feel them, like, when, uh, like, we can jump back uh but like when they get to the darkness um palace where fuck like all they do is like they go through the swamp and then they just fall into the dungeon it's like what the fuck 
<laughs> just because we got to be trapped in a dungeon, like nothing kidnapped them. They didn't get caught. Yeah. They get because yeah. if he got caught, that would alarm darkness. Yeah, and we don't want to do that yet because we're hiding him. Yeah, I'm telling you, it is kind of amazing. It's like, oh god, they fall down a hole in the the, just, in dungeon. the swamp and end up in a cage. Oh, the in the swamp. dungeon. We didn't even get All to right. the swamp. Yeah, that's why it's like we can go back <laughs> because I just wanted to get to that whole like they just want you to get into situations like the whole like we need armor. There's a like like magical cave of gold armor and shit Which, that like is impenetrable. There's a shield. It's like okay, this is your Clash of the Titans like. Perseus getting like the gifts from the gods in a weird which way. Which Jack's armor, by the way, which I told Colin about, is the cheapest thing from this movie because all it is is hammered down bottle caps. It does look cool. I it's think. awesome. I like his armor. <laughs> yeah, and we meet the other character, Una, who's Una. Uh, in his party. Who's a little like forest sprite or something. She's a sprite. She's, she's the Tinkerbell kind of a fair. Yeah, right. She has to love him. Yeah, and unrequited. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. really sure where that was going, but. Uh, but we mean is that just like a Peter Pan reference? Like maybe. fairies that like the dude and like are jealous of the other girl that he's trying to protect in a weird way. Yeah, it was a nod to Peter Pan. Yeah, in a weird way, she's like a seduct. He loves Lily, but she's like a seductive, like sexual thing it's, that he could yeah. easily, you know. And I like how she's always because she don't give a fuck. She's this is what I love about immortals. It's like they don't give a fuck about humans. She's just like, hey, dude, fuck this darkness shit, dude. I'll love you. I'll love. Well, she doesn't say that, but. You know, that's the gist in a weird way. Like, you know, uh, you know, a fairy's love is the... What does she say? Does she say a fairy's love is something that's like... I can't uh, fucking fairy remember. hearts or something. No, well, she heart. says fairy, yeah. Because human, human hearts, hearts don't are work that way. Like porridge are like... Uh, a fairy heart beats wild. and mm-hmm. But she says something about how a fairy... How a, how a human could do anything with a fairy's love or some shit like that. She just says something yeah, like that. She makes a reference. She says that she could like be anything you want her to be or something Because, like, like, the that. impish There's people a darkness in this are to weird. her character Very that's weird. kind like, of, you know, I mean, like, she goes on this thing and it's like, okay, so this is like a band of misfit friends, right? It's but the Hobbit, right? You got yeah. to get together a bunch of dwarves right? and, like, yeah. go on the quest. <laughs> right. That's what you do. And you have your magic, like, so she's their Merlin or their Gandalf or something, right? Because she, well, she's, well, she's just like Gump's like Sprite friend. I don't know, whatever. I, don't I know. think it's, it's it's Tinkerbell. But in that scene, I guess where they're imprisoned and she's the only one who can, you know, fly through the doors yeah. to go get the key. There's that, and she comes back and she's basically, you know, like Travis said, it's like, you know, you can either you can love me, and she gets upset in a way that's like, man, this is like kind of dangerous. Like she's gonna fuck him over. Well, like why is she, you know, attempting to seduce this guy by blatantly, you know, just becoming being a Lily. fairy man, just being a sprite, dude. They're not nice things. Yeah, but it's like the, it's I get that they're trying to give some kind of a character moment to the the character, right? To, to, to define her in some way. But it comes off as like you're this little fairy sprite, but now you're like mean in some. It didn't read as mean to you that scene. Well, see, I don't see that as mean. I just see that as uh, I don't know. I've always thought of the fairy world in in that way. Just impersonal. Right? In, it's alien. To human. You. Yeah, they don't have emotions. Come from the idea that we turn to dust. You know, if we yeah. lived forever, fuck it, fuck anything, yeah. like whatever. And, if, and we were talking earlier, like in Europe, they actually have this folklore, <laughs> and fairy folklore. They're very mischievous. They're they're kind of mean. They were oh, the okay. aliens. Yeah. they so, were the aliens of the day. They're very like mischievous. aliens come addicted hillbillies. Fairies came and abducted uh, uh, like Irish people, people or yeah. whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I guess. All right. What's okay. that? What's that? Oh, I can't. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I, well, I just think that's a that's another that's like a trial for Jack, right? It's a you know. Yep. Yeah, in the hero's journey. Yeah, because right, he has to mean, remain about, true and pure because he's innocent. He is there innocent. you go. That's where we're because it's all about like because I mean all he has to do is break away from Lily, right? In this whole movie, because like. Well, depending on the version that you saw. Well, but, but, no, there's no, but no, the end is, dude, the director's cut is mostly the first hour. It's just get, once they get to the freaking darkness thing, it seems pretty like by the books. It seems pretty, except for the introduction of darkness. Yeah. But the ending, like, I mean, I guess you're saying that his goal is to, like he needs to get away from Lily in the theatrical well, version. Because Gump's always just like, Gump's always just like, ah, fuck her. We just got to get the unicorn horn. You know, you don't care about Lily, too. Yeah, but in the in the theatrical cut, I guess this is the biggest change to me that I see that the, the, 
the, the two versions present is in the theatrical cut, you get the idea that Lily is heading out into the woods to meet her boyfriend, Jack. You never really feel like he's a magical creature in the theatrical cut because there's an implied love scene and then they play with the birds afterwards. Well, I don't think he's magical. He's just a wood I, dude. Well, I know, but he, well, he talks with fucking the, the That's nature. just wood shit. He's teaching her how to do it. Anybody can do it. You just got to live in the fucking woods yeah, since you were like, a kid. Like he's Mowgli. Caesar the dog whisperer. He's Mowgli or Tarzan, right? <laughs> But he, so like as her boyfriend, they're in love. So that's why, that's what motivates him to go after her. And at the end, they both run off into the sunset and wave back at uh, everybody else. Where in the director's cut, Jack returns, like it's another day for Jack. At the end of the day, because he's not like her, he ends up running. He's not human like she is. He runs off to the sunset and waves bye bye by himself. Am I right? Well, he's human. That's, that's not Is what he? I got. From, that's not what he's I got. He's human. Him. He's just a. He just belongs. That's not you know the. Well, he's his not, world guess, is in the woods. His world is, yeah. yeah. So he returns to his world. Yeah. yeah. But and at she's going to go day, back to her. At the end of the day, hers. she's still a princess. Yeah. Eventually, she's going to get married off but as the some theatrical. political deal by her parents. Yeah, because right. he just knows that it's like, <laughs> we, don't, we don't belong in the same world. I yeah. mean, he learns that from this, right? He yeah. takes her to the unicorn. Yeah, but in the theatrical cut, that doesn't no, happen. No, it doesn't. In the theatrical just cut, at the end, they get reunited, and they make out, and then they go running off into the... There's just too much story. Is your love strong enough? Yeah. So, like, I mean, I love the, the set designs of the Darkness's Palace. Those huge, Fantastic. monolithic, freaking, like, huge columns. Colors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, oh, my God. It's amazing. I'm wondering if we can back up just a little bit and talk no. briefly oh. Oh. about Meg Muckleman. Meg, yes. Played by Meg uh, Muckle- Robert, Picardo, Robert Picardo, the doctor from Star Trek. And also, was, Star Trek was a vo- I was blown away Voyager. when I heard that. Or I, I saw the documentary. Well, he was also. DVDs, and I was like, that fucking guy. Oh, indeed I do. <laughs> but oh. he had to have got the part because he also schlepped all that Rob Bottin makeup in the, the howling. howling. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. He was Eddie. Fantastic. Werewolf. Meg. Mucklebones is my favorite. Muckle, yeah. That's right, so a good, she's a swamp creature. She's that, a witch. Yeah. She's just yeah. a witch that witch. eats boys. You have to be. You have she's to, like the swamp witch. Yeah. If you're in a fairy tale legend movie, you got to come across the witch <laughs> that's going to eat you. A swamp yeah. witch. You know, a plump boy. Yeah. Fantastic green oh, hook super nose. Super green, oh, dude. Yeah. Like fantastic. A, a Kermit green. That's what I like about her. And then in the theatrical cut, they go and cut all her scenes out. Okay. So in the director's what? cut. <laughs> it's a much shorter scene in theatrical cut. In the theatrical yeah. cut, she pops up. She says, what do, we, what do we have here? Little boy or something like that. And then uh, he says, she says, oh, indeed I do. Yeah. Comes down and he cuts her head off. It's very short. But in the you director's me, cut. Davis? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed I, I, I do. Yeah, but once again, dude, everything that they cut out is just extended scene, extended scene, extended scene. Yeah, why but have her in there if not to like give her a, a scene? Because... <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Sorry. No, but I was saying... Everything else, like, they cut a lot of the dialogue with Lily and Jack in the beginning, and I'm okay with that. They cut a lot of extended scenes. They cut the the fairy oh, dance scene. Oh. But Meg Mucklebones deserves a long scene. Yeah, because I'm She's sorry, dude. Awesome. I'd rather have Tangerine Dream than Mia Sarah. <laughs> I mean, the first, like, ten oh, minutes of this singing? movie is like a musical. Like, yeah, I'm I don't, a princess. I'm I don't a need princess. To- <laughs> like, fuck it, Jack. I don't need to see her singing. I don't, but I could use a little more Meg. It was all right. That scene's okay. The whole, because he, like, kind of woos her. You know, Mm -hmm. he tries to, like, well, someone as fair as you. And she's, like, looking in the... uh, The reflection in the the shield. The reflection. Yeah. Because that's uh, that's a fairy tale staple, I think, that you you use your wiles to trick the the creature and then... Yeah, which is something that Lily does later on. Yeah. Yeah. So Lily is prisoner of darkness. Yes. Well, I want to talk about how darkness, because this is something where I will disagree that... I love darkness in the theatrical cut and not the director's cut because, yeah, you may see his face, but it's just kind of like in the beginning of the theatrical cut, you may see his face, but it's really close up and it's got the black light thing with the green eyes and all that jazz, right? But I love how in the theatrical cut, when he comes to the mirror, it's just his hand, then his hoof, and then she faints, and then there's like a... It's like a... uh, What's the word I'm looking for? There's something in the way of the camera. Not something in the way, but the There's camera. There's like a distortion on the lens. There's kind of something, and I like. So you don't see his face. He's like coming through. He's still yeah, kind of coming through, awesome. and I love the reveal in the theatrical version because that's more like epic to me. Like 
Because once, even when you see him, it's a little distorted until he like comes up on her. And then just that scene where the wind blows is like yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. It's like holy it's fuck, fantastic. dude. He <laughs> like yeah, dude. That's like oh my god. And I love. I've always loved the scene where Lily comes across the like. Well, the whole like woo. Uh, yeah. Is that voice like, different uh, in the? No, TV? I checked it. Okay. I checked YouTube because I thought it was really higher in the in <laughs> the. Uh, and I was like, I this is driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah, when I'm watching, I'm like, I remember that being different. <laughs> yeah, I thought. It, woo, I mean, woo, ha, make her make one, one of us. Yeah. But, but the, there's the, the dancing like I shadow love version. That scene. Well, yeah, I like love the it because dress, the, once again, this is like that. a kind of a metaphysical thing, yeah. right? Those are her like dark intentions or something mm. creeping up on her because she like saw the necklace yeah. and she, and like, she eventually necklaces. embraces it and becomes like this yeah. goth version. Oh, dude, of Lily. just that, just the just the scene when she like puts her arms out to it, you know, it's like holy fuck, you yeah. know. But she's like you actually see her giving in, like yeah. it's so cool. But the yeah. problem I have with the director's cut that I love about the, in the director's cut, you could kind of tell automatically she's playing. Like, I believed, like, oh, my God, she turned. When you watch the theatrical cut, it seems like she turns more. Where if you watch the director's cut, you're always a little aware that she's just kind of, like, like biding time with darkness. Where I kind of believe a little bit in the theatrical cut that, like, oh, dude, she might be a little fucked, you know? Like, she might be going, mm-hmm. like, the dark side here. I love that goddamn dress, dude. Yeah, well, all, split all the way below <laughs> the fucking belly yeah, button. Yeah, she was 15. Calm down. <laughs> Whatever. I didn't, I didn't put the dress on her. I'm just saying well, that darkness. dress is a man. I said nothing about who was wearing the I'm dress. I'm just kidding. Darkness has put this dress on her in an effort to make her his bride it's because that's what they dress. do, right? I mean, like, yeah. there's only one woman in the world for both Jack and Darkness. Yes. And Darkness wants her to become his, so, like, just sit and talk and with talk. me <laughs> for a little right. while in this goofy living chair, which isn't in the theatrical cut. But yeah, the like, goofy. Fuck, what's that? What's that line? He goes, uh, "I value your thoughts." <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good seduction scene. It's, it's, it's the best awesome. scene that he has in the it's movie, great. and where you get like the full force of the Tim Curry uh, performance. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, in that scene, he makes it. Which they, it, they said that. Um, from horn to hoof, he stood at thirteen feet tall. Thirteen feet tall. 13 he had to be walking around tall. in lifts because he's so. He much was. He was on stilts. Else. Yeah. But it culminates in a scene that I thought was maybe again. I'm watching the theatrical cut, so I'm not sure. You know, my memory on, on the director's cut, but <clears throat> she's like, "No, I'll never give in to you. I'll never, you know, whatever." And then, uh, then he throws a fit, knocks all the shit off the table and she laughs and runs away. Mm -hmm. And she says, there's nothing that, you know, I want more than basically there's a throat that needs to be cut the unicorn. And he has that laugh where it's like, (laughs) 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 I can't even do it. (laughs) It was like, wow, he's really getting off on this. And, uh, did that play any was there like a that played the same so it was abrupt like she was one minute no i'll never give in with you or give in to you and then the next minute yeah because like, she's just being all pixie like she does the same thing with jack right i mean she acts the same way with jack and i think the 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 director's cut if i remember puts all the seduction scenes together isn't it one big seduction scene because the theatrical cut it's broken up where they have to go and get the plates to no, bring the sunlight down through these mirrors. No, that's that the same. Gonna it's kind of cut up. As far as I remember, it? it's a little Because I remember Una, up. like, looking through the, the wall. Like, the, looking through the door. And saying, like, she's gone over to the yeah. dark side. And I don't think that was in yeah, it was. the theatrical. Because mm-hmm. they weren't there at that point. They were off gathering plates from the pig-headed dudes. Pig face. The, the butchers. Just, like, yeah, but Una, they split the up in teams, though. Yeah, Una, Una was there. Yeah, Una, Luna, whatever okay. her name is. Um, they show her with her really blue eye. Yeah, yeah. Really. Oh, I thought there was a that. moment when they were looking in at overhearing this conversation where they thought like Lily has gone over to the darkness. In the theatrical cut, it seemed only at the end when when uh, Gump and Jack have a viewpoint and they're uh, you know this, they're going to sacrifice the unicorn and Lily's there and they've got bow and arrow on them that he's like. You know, Gump says to Jack that she has actually, she is one of them at this point. You got to shoot her. And I believe it too. I did. I I think in the director's cut, they set that up earlier though, where they're like, you know, we see that she, she's being tempted. She's going over to, Hmm. it's not a big deal. I I like the time, I like the, the, uh, the time, um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? The what they use for t- like three beats of a blue bird yeah. heart or something like like yeah. three. W- <laughs> They've got like a clear globe with some fluid in it, but somehow it's doing like yeah. It, I was weird when they're like let's synchronize. I'm like tail. they're synchronizing watches. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Like what are we watching here? But yeah, yeah like one of the doors whips out like a hand watch, and then yeah, Gump just has a weird like. Like whatever it says something about th- yeah. three beats of uh whatever yeah something you know finch's tail or whatever. something, like something that. like whipper wolves they do like a, a wag of a, this thing's tail and yeah. it's like i like the time in this fantasy place. it's all stuff. done in it's all done in like nature time right yeah, yeah. So, but uh i guess that brings us to jack the end of alien to... i mean uh, <laughs> the, uh, I'm a, uh yeah we got yeah, a blast for some them reason out there's a the stargate void. it's like why does darkness need a star that's gate? to the other to the that's space. to the void the void man to space that's where his father is in the void <laughs> is he is he yeah space is space is darkness i guess right yeah space is space cold but that's just stupid but i just thought also, it was stupid it's like what the so top he's of like place is a Stargate to space? He's literal darkness, but also figurative darkness, as in, like, He's there the can be of... no you without me. We are brothers. We are split apart. Eternal brother. <laughs> yeah. That I am always a part of you. Like, even if you kill him, basically, yeah. darkness will still live in some uh, part of the human heart. Yeah. In Jack, though, I don't see it because he's like, you know, innocence personified, but there's a big fight scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's not bad. There's it's people swinging across. That's actually the one part where I didn't like Botine's makeup job on Darkness because I think there's a stunt head uh, that they incorporate so he the guy can actually run. He can actually run, yeah. And when he you runs, it's weighted different, and it's bobbing, and the oh, Darkness wow. face is frozen in one yeah. uh, expression and can't move, it's and it's this. like, uh, yeah. Good line, though, though. What do we hear? A little Boy. I love that line, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, everything about it. But father, protect me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's his father? Getting sucked out the fucking airlock. The devil. Like yeah. the devil gets sucked out the airlock. Ugh, fucking Ridley, dude. <laughs> it is. It's he's literally right. It is the end of it. <laughs> blast the guy out into space. Uh, but I guess the point of the scene, the the dramatic heft of it, is that Jack chooses to, in the moment, like Lily looks like I she's going you. to kill this fucking unicorn mm-hmm. and join darkness. And he's given a choice where he can either shoot her dead God, what's the or cool not. Li- what's the cool line she says when she's like, like I, I that- am the sister to the something. She says something, something. about like. God damn, yeah, I can't sister to the night. It was a cool line, though. The, it was totally wicked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> their costume is very fetching at that. I don't know. I guess something for goth chicks. I don't know, yeah, that's, a, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Super awesome. Yeah. So he makes the choice to spare her, and sure enough, Lily has not gone over to the dark side. She cuts the bond of the unicorn, and tells it to run free. And then they all go after darkness and blast them out the goddamn airlock. And then everybody uh, regroups in With the, the forest. Sun. We, yeah, the sun. They hit like a mirror, like which I don't think that can work. I don't think that's science. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> light blasts through doors. Well, I don't think it like even bounces off of mirrors <laughs> like that crazy way. It just doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, but they had to get sunlight in there to kill them. Yeah, the reflective but, properties. I mean, it it would just not that strong. Not enough to blast a couple of doors. No, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good visual effect. I, I kind of appreciated that. So, yeah. Um, crap, there was something else I was going to say about either fantasy movies or legend itself. By the time we wrap this movie up, because everybody has then regrouped in the forest, Jack and Lily make out. He dives in. He gets a ring yep. that she threw in earlier in the movie. Which was a challenge to who I'm going to marry whoever finds this ring. Yes. The world is reset. Yes. Nell is apparently back to normal. Do we see Nell in no. the finale? No. You don't see her husband, we Nell's just... husband, in the theatrical cut. Who cares about him? You've okay, only see, you only see him, like, what, frozen in the house, right? He's, like, when passed else do you out. Yeah. Think. He's passed out. Yeah, he's she passed out. It just gives the impression Weird. that Nell isn't living there by herself. Right. You know, she's got a kid and a husband. It's like there's a cluster of people. Yeah, in there's this little, a baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and in the director's cut, I kind of like her little speech where she says, like, well, today was fun. You know, like, this was just another mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. in this world, right? Like, can I visit you tomorrow? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I like that. Uh, 
Well, if it's a fairy tale, has either one of these characters, I mean, now if we're saying that Jack is the innocent one who may be the central character of the story, or Lily, the human, you know, okay, I'll stop saying it. She's the, okay, human. where were the, the materialistic person. I was going to say human. Yeah, can't stop it. I'm thinking everybody else is she magical is, she, except she for her. Is, she but, is what darkness was talking about. There's a piece of me in all of you, la, 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 la. That's yeah. her. You know, she's got that in her. So after everything's all wrapped up, what was the lesson learned by these folks? By our fairy tale? You saw an awesome movie? Uh-oh. With unicorns and the devil? Oh, oh that's not good. Though. There was not a moral to this movie. Not that I could suss out. It was just a love movie that had things from fairy tales and legends. <laughs> That's it, really, like, hmm, hmm, Style over substance. I think so, but I've always felt that about Ridley Scott a little bit. He's gotten better, I think. Not lately. uh, Well, Prometheus was just Blade Runner. He just rehashes shit he used to do, and like, whatever, it's new. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe you're right, because I remember Prometheus thinking that he was going to go after this bigger idea, like a science fiction-y idea, and then it turns into like a squiddy, you know, uh, monster movie, and they just kind of left all that behind. Like, eh, well, all right. Do you have anything else to say about Legend? I don't know. The soundtrack, (laughs) the multiple cuts. I mean, I just love the soundtrack. I love it to death. The Tangerine Dream one. Love it. I also love the Jerry Goldsmith one. Mm. Although I will Man. tell you for uh, movie trivia aficionados, I picked this up when I was watching the director's cut. Like, what the hell? When they're actually lifting the uh, plates, the reflective plates up, they play a musical cue, which is the theme from Psycho 2, also written by Jerry Goldsmith. What? But that's the Psycho 2 theme is played huh. there. Weird. Yeah, because it fit the scene, or they didn't ever, never compose music for it, or I don't know what the hell. I'm telling you. Interesting. The yeah. score of this movie's not good. Tangerine Dream. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Gonna... Uh, so that brings us time for summoning Igor. Igor, Igor our mailbag. mailman. Where are you, Igor? Oh, my God, Igor. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. I have. Hey, make sure if you and your friend are going to be in your room, I want the door open. I just. <laughs> we're not going to have another incident like what happened last time. It took forever to clean up the mess. Chris. Well, okay. Well, let's. You didn't uh, see what was in there. Should we start with Legend and work backwards or whatever. start with last week's episode? Let's do whatever. All right, we'll start way back. Superman 3. Yeah! Uh, Travis had made a observation during Superman 3 that, that when he becomes jerk Superman, Superman's costume changes color into the Brandon Routh Superman suit. Right. Ergo. Every Superman we've seen cinematically is evil. Right. That is why, and that, like, and Zack Snyder's proven it. Like, I mean, well, Crypticus writes in and says, scientifically, that holds water. I think it does. There you go. Look at, look at our society. <laughs> like, I mean, society's <laughs> grown darker. Superman's grown darker. They changed the color of his boots and cape. Now we don't even have red boots in the comics. He's got blue boots. It's like they're getting somehow, like, pure, like, bright red and, like, bright blue is somehow for pussies. I don't know. It's like, that's weak tit. We'll bring it back in 2053. Hopefully, right? right? <laughs> uh, about uh, Ghostbusters 2, last week's episode, Thomas Keen writes in and says, Ghostbusters 2 is a terrible movie. The reboot is better than Ghostbusters 2. There was hardly any busting in Ghostbusters 2, and busting makes me feel good. I agree, Tom. I'm disappointed in you, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I, you can get away with saying part two is not good, but even like hawking a recommendation for the remake, shame on you. Disappointed. I didn't mind the remake. Yeah, didn't mind it. I'm not saying it's because I'm I like fifty fifty. Only because you saw it in three D. I stand by that. Yeah, if you would have if you would have seen it in two D, you would have fucking fun you would have like. The movie. I don't uh, know. By anyway. the end of it, I was having fun. Uh, okay, so about legend. Yeah. Andrew Kalbfus writes in and says, I've only seen the theatrical version, but it's a great movie. And Crypticus writes in and says, such a great weirdo, creepy flick. Saw it in theaters the night of the release. I actually consider it more of a horror than a fantasy. 
The awesome Tangerine Dream score has become synonymous with the film for me, so I don't care for the Snow White ass music of the alternate <laughs> version, <laughs> even though that cut features more Meg Mucklebones and more scenes of those awesome goblins. <laughs> Agree, Crypticus. Yeah, man, we didn't talk so much about the goblins in this episode, but they're cool. Whatever, they rhyme, all that shit. Whatever. Black <laughs> is cold, black is ice. Whatever, whatever. Here be goblin it. paradise. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Black as night, black as bitch, black as the foulest witch. witch. <laughs> Nick Hammond writes in and says, "I've never seen this movie, but." McFarland Toys made a pretty sweet oh, yeah. figure of darkness. He attached yeah. an image there. But yeah. I mean, that design pretty, is just. Yeah, I've owned it. Fucking fantastic. Oh, yeah, you have that one? I, well, I used yeah. to. I've sold it. The As movie a, Maniacs? Yeah. Yeah. That's that pretty awesome. And Sean Copeland writes in and says, I love this pick. Holly is definitely right to do Legend. I just bought the director's cut, but feel it was a little bloated. Yes. Definitely worthy. Uh, definitely a worthy demonic entry, but Pennywise is more horrific to me. And he just wants to say, as a brand new listener to the podcast, it's one kick-ass show you guys are producing. But it's even better with Holly, hands down. She's a great addition this to the team dynamic. Like slightly, wow, you should uh, date this guy, right? This sounds slightly uh, slanted here. Yeah. No mention of how good the other uh, <laughs> members are. Right. Shut up. I guess so. There you go. Huh. Thanks, well, if you, John Copeland. If you want to get a hold of us, listener, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also find us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us the old-fashioned way at Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. And that means it's getting time. Oh, my God. The bell's toll for thee. The hour has come, sirs. And the appearance of Lurk means that we've come to the right. Sorry. That's a shudder up my spine. So that means we're going to start with Travis, because he's in the hot seat tonight. I, you know, I've always loved Legend, just because I think of it as one of those movies that inspired uh, creativity in me. But the more and more and more and more I watch it, so I'm like, I just cannot fucking deal with the pacing of the movie, with the, I love the scenes I love. But that's the problem I have with the movies. I only love darkness scenes. <laughs> and uh, the goblin scenes. Anything with a bad guy in this movie is amazing. Like, I just don't buy... In a weird way, I almost find the interest is more in the darkness character. Like, or in what the bad guys are doing. Because, yeah. I don't know. The, well, they're all driving the, good, the plot. Yeah, all the good guy stuff is really just like, meh. I get it. Yeah, You're a reacting. good guy. You're a the the, the 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 the. But yeah, the bad guys are doing everything cool. They got all cool speeches. Um, everyone's fucking eyebrows are out of control in this movie. <laughs> Even <laughs> me and Sarah, <laughs> eyebrows out of fucking control. Uh, that's the eighties. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. It's like there's gonna be close ups in this movie. Eyebrows, people. glitter, and bubbles. Yeah. Crazy man. So, I mean, I recommend this movie just based on what it is. But I personally, like, fuck, I don't know the next time I'll ever watch this movie just because I've seen it so goddamn much. I've just seen it so much. But you would recommend it to another person? Yeah, maybe. Because like I said, I've, I've, I've been there where I'm like, wasn't that great? And they're like, it's a fairy movie. And it's like, yeah, yeah, there's a fucking unicorn on the cover. <laughs> I feel like you're a little bitter because you watched the director's cut. I'm definitely bitter because I watched the director's <laughs> cut. I was just like, this is fucking bullshit. There's not three acts. There's just one hour and then another hour. <laughs> That's what the director's cut <laughs> is. Can we play a little Tangerine Dream for you right now? Let's I listened to Love for the Sun or, or whatever <laughs> before I came here. Because I got do nothing love... on Brian Ferry's Was Your Love Strong Enough. Oh, my God. Oh, man. But I just, no, I, I've, I've always felt that this movie, it doesn't pick up until they get on their way. I can, like, do without a majority of the opening of this movie. A majority of 
of the princess and Jack shit and whatever. There's just so much of it that I just don't care about that because I just don't know anything about the characters. They don't tell you anything about them. You know, two dimensional princess, two dimensional fucking Peter Pan guy. Uh, and whatever, but the makeup is awesome. And, uh, I guess that's it. So at least I recommend it. I just don't recommend it for myself to watch. again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I kind of pretty much agree with what Travis has said here. I think it's a movie of style over substance where the style is very strong. For 80s, you know, fantasy, I guess it's it strikes its own path by being, like we said, a fairy tale instead of a Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing. But, I mean, yeah, you have to see it, I think, well, if you're, you know, interested in visual storytelling because of, the uh i mean the the interesting photography and all that you know whatever the very active uh all the shit flying around yeah. the frame. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> uh you got to see it for the production design you got to see it for the rob botine i mean this is a star turn i think for rob botine's uh makeup department i mean, he, he had I mean, we were looking in the credits there's like 50 guys working for him i mean it had to be cuz you're designing all of these uh, fantasy creatures. <clears throat> I mean, it really does seem like an undertaking, uh, something to be applauded. And the the design of like uh, Blix, I like Meg Mucklebones mm-hmm. and Darkness stand out to me mm-hmm. as like, you know, I mean, like, those are definitive, you know. Yeah. For like goblins and uh, and a devil character. Um, but it is really short on characterization, mm-hmm. and I think that's always a th- that's a problem with a lot of. 80s fantasy movies i want to say more maybe even than like just movies that came out of the 80s it seems like they were really because i'm thinking like specifically like crawl right or another yeah. movie that i've talked about <laughs> space hunter you know i just watched not too long ago but they were you know like they're trying to follow i think the blockbuster template which is we have a hero's journey and these people go on these kind of episodic adventures but it's like, who are these people who are going on these adventures? It's like, well, they're just archetypes. And I don't think that's enough to engage you. You're engaged then by the visual interest, which is where the filmmakers are because they have the technology now and the, yeah, you know, yeah. the to sculpt that's what things. I was saying, and, the filmmakers, that's what they're into. They're not, yeah. They don't give a shit about the characters. They no, just need this is it. our excuse to make a fantasy world and realize it on film from the filmmaker's point of view. Yeah. It's like, that's why you do the movie. What's it about? Well, it's the oldest story in the book. It's uh, there's light and Good dark versus <laughs> evil. <laughs> yeah, huh, interesting and concept. We, yeah, can't miss. So, um, you know, again, I, I prefer the director's cut, but I watched the theatrical cut here tonight, and the takeaway from it was, even though it's an alternate cut of the movie, it's still basically the same movie. The theatrical cut's like a leaner uh, version, um, but. But it's the same. Legend is legend either cut that you watch. So, uh, I mean, I would recommend it, you know, with the caveat that it's not necessarily a really good story, but it's a great visual experience. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Legend. I love this movie. Um, I I honestly agree with what you guys are saying. I've always thought that this is a beautiful movie. The the set design is fantastic. The makeup is amazing. The it's it's gorgeous. Like the whole movie, you're just you're. There's not. I don't think there's one shot that you're not like. This is beautiful. Everything sparkles or everything's colorful. It's gorgeous. Um, I agree. The characters leave a lot to be desired. The story is pretty basic. Light versus dark. There's a hero. There's a villain. Um. There's a damsel in distress. There's a damsel in distress. Um, I I do think that we were talking about the moral earlier. I, I do think that the moral of the story is that your actions have consequences and you have to take responsibility for them. I think that's the overall, and it's it's flat. It is flat. I'll give you that. But I think that's the uh, moral of the story. Um, I I love the makeup. I think Darkness is one of the greatest makeup characters of all the all film 
I think he's amazing. When I went and saw and- Black Sabbath live with Ozzy, <laughs> when when they sang the part, Satan sitting there, he's smiling. They had that scene of him doing that big laugh uh, in the in the mm-hmm. seduction scene. Mm-hmm. Because it's the best it representation <laughs> of the devil in a film. It's fantastic. Um, and the goblins, I think, were amazing. I love uh, Blix is a fantastic character, and his face is actually modeled after Keith Richards, which I think Uh-oh. is hilarious. Which I think is hilarious. Um, but yeah, I, I I love this movie. I think it's, I think it's honestly, I I love it so much because it's it's like pure imagination. I love that. And when you're looking at it filming filmmaking perspective, it's just pure imagination. I think that's amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know if I would go nuts and be like, oh my god, everyone needs to see this movie, it's the best movie. I wouldn't say that, but I'd say this movie is an experience that everyone should have. Have either of you seen Snow White and the Huntsman? Yes. Nope. <laughs> Does Snow White and the Huntsman borrow heavily from the movie Legend? Heavily? Mm. I would say it could be... There's a unicorn? <laughs> She is the most innocent, virtual, per, virtuous person who gets to wander into the forest and touch the unicorn. I think well, that wasn't she, a unicorn; it was just a white horse. Was it a white horse? It was just a but white somebody horse. shoots it, right, and it runs away. Isn't that the same no. fucking scene? And okay, no, it um. Seems it, to me they try to trap the horse. No, it just it gets stuck in mud, and she has to walk the rest of the way. Oh, okay, fine. Never mind. <laughs> All right, in, so influenced maybe I'll go with influence. <laughs> Big fantasy epic. Of recent years. Uh, recent vintage. So, next week, that means it's my pick, right? I think so. I follow you. So, next week, we're going to watch a forgotten, lost film. So, nobody's seen it. But uh, hopefully, you have, and you'll listen next week. It's called The Resurrected. It's a Dan O'Bannon film. who made, He made Return of the Living Dead and this. And uh, it's based on an H.P. Lovecraft story called The Case of Charles Dexter Ward. So, that's going to be next week. If you can seek it out. Chris Sarandon's in it. It's a good movie. Watch it. We'll talk about it next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. Dark, 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 dark.